Hello everyone and welcome back to Overplay, the only video game overview show shot in the form of a Let's Play, and while there's probably a good reason for that, we don't have time to talk about it today because we have to discuss Jurassic World Evolution. And Evolution is so amazingly misused, you would think it was being used as the plot of a bad 80s science fiction movie. But I suppose it works better than the full phrase they were going to use, which was Jurassic World, well, mankind has dabbled in a domain he was never meant to do so in. Oh, it's all gone horribly wrong. Why should we ever play? Why did we ever try and play God? Would not fit on the box too well. Now, Jurassic World Evolution is a zoo simulator. Full stop. There's no real plot beyond that. You manage a select bit of islands, the ones that you've seen in the movies, plus a couple new ones, and... Just try and build them up and make sure you got a park running. That's the long and the short of it. And while there's nothing inherently wrong with that, it does leave a little bit to be desired in some people. Now, each island has its own set of differences and problems you have to overcome. Predominantly, though, the challenge comes from working between your three divisions. Your science division, your entertainment division, and your security division. Each one will require you to do different things, and the more you work with one division, the less standing you'll gain with the other divisions. Unfortunately, that also comes at the price of even if you have a division that asks the exact same thing. So, say you have the entertainment division and you have the security division ask you to breed and release a specific kind of dinosaur. Shouldn't be much of a problem, right? Well, we'd like to think so. Unfortunately, if you do one for the other, it will recognize that you've done it for the security division, not the entertainment division, rather than doing it for both. Now, that wouldn't be too much of a problem, except that happens a lot. You'll also get missions that you can't fulfill because you don't have access to the current technology that you need or the right dinosaur DNA. And that gets more than a little maddening after a while. That being said, once you do start working with a division, they do kind of give you some really great stuff. The trick is trying to figure out exactly how you get all that you need spread across the different islands. Now, for instance, right here, I have $22 million sitting on this island so that I can play with whatever I need. Unfortunately, that doesn't extend to all the other islands. So, say, if I wanted to go over to another one that I have, this one right here, Isla T Takano, I hope I pronounced that right, I only have $47,000 on this island. Unfortunately, most everything I need to do for this island costs lots, lots more than that. So it kind of creates an interesting balancing act that you have to try and exploit dig sites. When you go to a dig site, you'll unearth fossils, but you'll also sometimes unearth various other little things that you can sell off, uh, things that you can't recover DNA from. And the only way to actually get the money you need for islands like this, especially early on on their development, is to abuse that and have it bounce in between the research centers, which you have to have on every island. So you can't devote one island to being a security island. You can't devote one island to being a island for uh, entertainment and so forth and so on. And that's kind of a drag. But ultimately, not the worst problem you could ask for. Now, the worst problem you could ask for is having the problem of carnivores all over your island and people demanding to come see them, like I did over on Isla Muerte there. I just recovered from a bad dinosaur in escapement. I currently have a pin full of, full of Dilophosaurus. Now, unfortunately, I have lots of things that are supposed to be set up against them, but it doesn't always work out so good. Whether it's through sabotage or through the dinosaurs just repeatedly throwing themselves against it, you wouldn't think that a dinosaur about the size of a person constantly flinging itself against giant heavy steel rebar would bend it and break it out of shape, but apparently just a couple of hits does it. Go figure. So, like I say, it's a bit of a balancing act. 
I understand why it's there. It's just kind of an annoyance when you try and do it. All right, now I need power. Huh, I gotta find a way to connect this to another part of the island. Ah, oh, God. Now, you can't build outside the island's constraints, which is a bit of a problem for some things, especially like right here, where I just realize I'm going to have to... Get out of here right now! I'm going to have to tear this down and start over again because I don't have a way for anybody to get to this facility. So, managing where and how you place your constructs is just as important as who you use to gain build-up and following with. That being said... This game does have some very good aspects, namely in which it is drop-dead gorgeous. And I'm not just talking from a video game standpoint. The dinosaurs in this look way better than most of the dinosaurs in the movies. Show you what I'm talking about here. Seriously, this thing... I would expect this in any kind of a game to look half as good. You don't hardly get to see them unless you get up close, but they are always modeled like this, and you can choose different aspects of them. The evolution part of the game comes from the fact that you can toy with their genome. Say I wanted to make one of these. Go to Modify Genome, and I have a variety of things I can pick from. I can choose what kind of skin pattern it has, lifespan, adding resilience and another lifespan now once you go to more islands and you go try and find more stuff out there you can see what all's out there you gain access to more dig sites allowing you to get more dinosaurs that being said there is a limit to how many dinosaurs you can get once you hit 100 percent you can no longer put into that dinosaur's genome so you have to take it you have to sell any fossils that you find the kicker about that is, I don't know how well that works, though, because there is a limit to how many fossils you can, in fact, sell. I've hit that limit with a couple of them, so it just kind of ends up being a little weird. I'm not sure what happens once you reach that limit, but I'm sure it'll happen eventually. That being said, the more, di more complete genome you get for a dinosaur, the easier it is to hatch. Usually when you hatch one, you'll have a certain percentage. This one has an 80% genome completion rate, so it's fairly well established that it'll come out perfectly fine and everything will work right. My Sinoceratops here, though, I've only got 63%. He doesn't look so good. So I've got about a, 50, a little under a 50-50 chance of him coming out properly. Now you can increase that with various upgrades to your facility. As you can see here, I've got a success rate upgrade, an incubation speed, and another success rate, which stack on top of each other. So that helps. At the end of the day, Jurassic World Evolution is a perfectly fine zoo simulator, if a little frustrating, just for the little things that niggle at you. It isn't totally bad, but it could have used some more improvement, in my personal opinion. Either way, the game is a time sink, and if you enjoy these kinds of games, I guarantee you'll enjoy this one especially. Especially if you like Jurassic Park as much as I do. That being said, these are all just opinions, and opinions are subjective. What did you think? Did you guys play this? And if so, did you like it? Do you hate it? Do you think the Jurassic Park should never have gone beyond the first movie, like just about everybody who has a right brain? Leave a comment down below, and we'll see you next time, everybody. And if you enjoyed what you saw, be sure and hit that little like button and think about giving us a subscription. We'll see you next time.